what do you get when you take people dedicated to their craft, going through leaps and bounds, acting on their plan of action, even in the midst of adversity? You get a heartfelt story so organic and becoming so genuine, which forces you to be a part of their moment, joining these experiences as if you were a part of them. These are stories of people, just like you and I, reflecting from within on how they use adversity to catapult their lifestyle, their vision, and their goals to becoming successful. Here at the Stories to Savor Network, we welcome you to this wonderful, heartfelt show entitled Reflections from Inside. So the next time you go through trials and tribulations, or having self-doubt, consider to let the stories resonate with you in hopes to inspire you to believe that you can do whatever you set your mind to do. Welcome back. I'm sitting with author Stacy Killian, who wrote the book, The Cardboard Box, where we're continuing our conversation about her journey. So through all the things that you've gone through, there's got to be something that really kept you going, kept you motivated, inspired you, a hobby, a passion. What kept you going through um, all these years? Well, there's probably several things that kept me going, um, mainly my children. I didn't want my children to have lived the childhood that I did, so I wanted to set a good example. Um, I also ventured out into doing some bodybuilding, um, some singing, okay. some songwriting. Um, I was always really good with writing. Um, so I wanted to get rid of some of the anxiety and I wanted to have some healthy habits. So being a single parent, I wanted to set that example for my children on what not to do. Um, you know, and, and then also my, my job. I really was absorbed in my job. I was um, promoted to vice president of this huge insurance company, nice. which was just terrifying but very rewarding at the same time. Yeah. But you know, I'd, I'd gotten the hundred, over the $100,000 home that we wanted and I had to spend a lot of time with my children. In hindsight, I looked back, and it's like um, I, I kind of picked up where I left off with my childhood. So every day we'd get up and say, oh, what are we going to do today? Because I got to live my childhood through them. So we'd have big sense. birthday parties, yeah. lots of cakes, you know, and pinatas, and lots of friends over. And then Everything you missed out on. Everything I missed out on. Yeah. yeah, and I did some um, volunteering at the church, and I was teaching Sunday school. And I remember one specific day that um, I had all these little boys, and we were doing this fish game. And the kids are like, I'm four. And the other kid's like, well, I'm four and a half. And the other kid's like, well, I'm five. And then I look at them and I go, how old do you think I am? And they all look up at me and they go, 12. <laughs> and then I thought, you know what, that makes sense. I'm yeah. probably acting 12 because that's where my childhood left off. Yeah. Okay. So it was just like, okay, this is good. So I, I, I was able to recognize and self-diagnose like when things would trickle in, try to stay away from the codependency, which would try to creep into my life constantly. Um, my son got diabetes when he was 10. That was a mm. huge, um, huge step yeah. back, like, whoa, what do we do with this? Sure. Uh, luckily, you know, I was in the bodybuilding, so I knew about the macronutrients, and I knew how to give him the shots with the carbohydrates, and, you know, it was a huge obstacle. Yeah. It was a, a life changer. So I stopped the competing, but I kept working out to stay in shape. And many times people would be like, oh, you did you go lift weights, you know, so you could kick the crap out of your ex-husband? Yeah. And I'd say, no, I, you know, I just do it as a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. You know, I just want to be in shape and set a good example. And it's kind of addicting. And with me, I'm all or nothing with everything I do. So I have to be really careful on what I choose. Gotcha. So it's, um, it's been, a, you know, a, a great ride. And there was many, many people in my life that influenced me, that helped empower me. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. When we return, we'll ask Stacy some more about those influential people who impacted her life after the break on Reflections from Inside. from inside. We're sitting in Genoa, Illinois, outside the gorgeous St. Catherine's Church, where you found your wings and you were able to fly. So we do know that the priest was incremental in helping Stacy to move on to her next place in life. Who else was important to you? Um, thank you for asking, because there were a few uh, folks that definitely impacted my life forever. So my first um, impactful person was my marketing teacher in high school. So I was a junior in high school, 
I took this marketing course and you didn't have to compete in sales but your senior year you had to and so that's why I took the course because your senior year you get to have a half day of school sure and then the rest of the day you work and I had already been working since I was 11 so I just wanted time off from school so she just like brainwashed me into into in, believing into, into yourself? believing into myself yeah. and so I competed and I took third in state Wow! and then the following year I took every category and I won everything first in district state and national I won sixth in the nation in sales that's impressive so that was my segue into sales and probably gave you a lot of confidence right a ton of confidence yeah. yes because that was a huge accomplishment and then um, throughout that period as when I moved to Illinois, I got salesperson of the month, salesperson of the year. I mean, nobody has ever beat me to this day in sales. Wow. So I've been number one in sales. The other people that influenced me are my grandparents because they were multimillionaires, but we didn't know it. I mean, we, you would, and you would never know it because grandma would mend the socks. Okay. Um, they wore the same clothes and they had, a, they was, were married until they died. Wow. So they were married over 70 years. That's beautiful. And their children, my dad, and their adopted son both died before them. No. So they had gone through tremendous pain yeah. and heartache, but yet they stuck it together. And you know, we didn't know until, I didn't know until I was like in my 30s that they were millionaires. My grandfather just passed away recently, but they took us hunting and they took us fishing and camping. And the one thing that was set in my mind so strongly when it came to success and money and which motivated me was my grandmother and grandfather had taken me to Perkins, which was a, a big deal for me because we never went to restaurants. And I was looking at the menu and my grandma says to me, she said, you can have anything you want on the menu, don't look at the price. And I'm looking at these pancakes with like the strawberries and the whipped cream yeah. and I'm thinking, you know, and I'm looking at the price. And then she said, and that's what it's like to have money. Wow. And that just set with me and I was probably nine and that just set with me forever. So I knew if they could do it, because they were part of my bloodline, that it was cap that I could do it too. Yeah. And then as I moved to Illinois and I had these wonderful uh, family-owned company that I worked for, I was their top producer. After I had my first child, they, they wanted me to come back to work when my baby was two weeks old. So I brought him in because they, they would watch him because I was their top salesman and I only worked four hours a day. And I was making a lot of money at that time for being 19 years old with yeah. a child. And then um, after that, I was going to open my own company. And then I met my other boss, and he helped me discover um, what was going on with some uh, sexual abuse with the children, which we can talk. You can read in the book. And then um, you know those. And then also he took me to church. And at that time, you know, I'm all or nothing with everything. And so there was a very dark, dark, dark time frame in my life, which you'll read in the book uh, when I hit 30. Um, it just devastated me. So like mm -hmm. I said, I'm all or nothing. And my boss just knew. To, he picked me up one day and said, we're going to church. Yeah. And I ended up in a very dark place. Um, took me about a year to get out of it. And uh, you know, it's an, it's an amazing story because it's a miracle from God. Right. He, he miraculously healed me overnight right. with that situation. So, you know, there, and I, what I realized is that the people that inspired me, it, it was such a just, a one sentence thing yeah. or a one little tiny thing and it changed my whole world and I hadn't really thought about the 10 million bad things yeah. and how that could have affected me. Right. So that was an eye opener as well. So it was a lot of self reflection. Sure. So throughout your childhood you it sounds like you had a couple of people that you could lean on. You felt you felt found some strength through your grandparents yes. and them telling you this is what you need to make your life kind of move. Was there anyone that um, touched you during your childhood, during school? Is there anyone that really helped carry you along um, that was incremental in your life? My grandparents were the primary ones that did because my mother never did anything with us. Um, so, you know, if we wanted to go to ballet or tap or if I wanted a bicycle for Christmas, mm -hmm. my grandparents were always the ones that would provide. And so when my dad and my mom got divorced, my dad took off. He was an alcoholic, a drug addict. Mm -hmm. um, my grandparents would pay the child support. Sure. So you know they they taught us about the birds and the bees and all these different types of trees and all these different types of fish and a lot about wilderness and flowers and kind of educated us on how to live and how to cook and you know, my mother never cooked and so my grandmother taught me how to bake and so if it wasn't for them you know I didn't know what normal was like. if if you have to look at what a normal would look like. Teacher. 
Yeah, like a teacher. It sounds like you had a lot of people that really did care about you. You went, you went through a, the beginning of your years where you felt like no one was there, and you've got these folks that really gave you some empowerment. Yes. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah, it was great. That. When we return, we'll dive in deeper with Stacy on the signs and symptoms of codependency on Reflections from Inside. <laughs>